My boyfriend doesn't want to marry me because I'm an immigrant plus update. I, 29 years old, went to the United States as a graduate student from Indonesia seven years ago. I met my partner, 30 years old, a few months after I relocated, and we've been together ever since. My partner is a citizen of the United States. We had a serious talk about where our relationship was going when I graduated. I said unequivocally that I wanted to marry and have children in the future. My boyfriend had similar views. I recall asking him whether he saw it happening with me because I didn't want to be in a relationship that didn't have a future. He assured me he loved me and that we were absolutely on the right track. We've been dating for seven years as of last week. We discussed marriage on occasion, but we were both preoccupied with our different professions, so the moment didn't seem right. However, my firm just indicated that there is a possibility that my department's job would be outsourced. I'm on an H-1B visa, temporary worker, which means I need to start searching for employment as soon as possible if I want to remain in the U.S. I brought it up last week, on our anniversary. I asked him whether he felt it was a good time to consider getting married, since it would also assist with my visa concerns. He seemed to be ready to vomit. After considerable probing, he admitted that he didn't intend on marrying me until I was able to get a green card permanent resident in the United States. I was perplexed since he'd never addressed it before. His reasoning was that he didn't want to be used as a visa mule, his words, not mine, by me, and that he wanted to ensure that I married him because I loved him, not because it was a ticket to staying in the U.S., which can only happen if I receive a GC. It took me some time to digest what he said, and I asked him if he was comfortable with moving to Indonesia with me, which he was not. I didn't respond properly and had to leave since I couldn't cope with what had just transpired. I'm still in a state of shock. I began dating him because he was the most attentive, kind, and giving guy I'd ever encountered. I now feel like I squandered seven years of my life. While the visa restrictions are undoubtedly a concern, I did not date him with the purpose of turning him into my safety net. I can't believe that after over a decade of dating, he still doesn't know what type of person I am. This relationship seems like it's coming to an end, and that hurts. It's really painful. Update I've been on an H-1B visa for a little over two years. After graduate school, I was on STEM OPT for roughly three years. I had poor luck with the H-1B lottery, and I only received one in the last round in which I was allowed to apply. Obtaining PR in the United States is not a simple task. I know folks who have lived in the country for more than 15 years and are still waiting for their PR. Those of you who DM'd me calling me a money digger made me laugh. I am aware of the laws involved in sponsoring a spouse for permanent residency, particularly the financial element. For the following reasons, it should not have been a problem. I am a STEM major who has just transitioned into management. I work for a huge corporation and do well for myself. My partner is a teacher and our salaries are not similar, he makes roughly $60,000, while I make close to $300,000. We've been together for six years. We have a joint account into which we both put a portion of our paycheck to pay for expenditures such as rent and electricity. We don't handle each other's money, thus the remainder of our money goes into our own private accounts. I've accumulated a lot of money in the form of savings plus investments since I'm a really thrifty person. If my lover had been concerned about the legalities of financially supporting me for 10 plus years, I would have cheerfully discussed transferring the money around. I was even thinking about purchasing a home, so we could have made it a joint venture. The point is that we could have found it out ourselves. I've never depended on him financially, and I have no plans to do so in the future. I may not have examined everything, but you should know that I only contemplated the marriage for visa idea lately when the prospect of having to leave loomed over me. This isn't something I've given much attention to. Concerning my status in Indonesia, I came from an extremely devout and traditional family, and I had a terrible upbringing. My family is not supportive of my job choices. When I went to the United States, I severed touch with my family, thus they are not included in the image. I was on good terms with my BF's family, and they adored me. Now for the real news. He is no longer my boyfriend. I spent a few days to gather my thoughts before approaching him with a desire to speak with him, he concurred. 
he turned out to be insecure about earning less than I did for quite some time. His buddies have apparently made fun of our relationship, dubbing me the sugar mother since I cover the majority of the bills. Until today, he had never told me this. He evidently didn't feel like an equal since our income was so disparate, and he began to suspect that I was merely with him to acquire a PR here quickly. I was stunned. I couldn't believe his acquaintances had duped him into questioning our connection. I reminded him of how he had helped me when I was in graduate school, such as getting me groceries when I didn't have much money, allowing me to stay with him rent-free in my final year of grad school to help me minimize expenses so I didn't have to take out a loan, and allowing me to use his car when I went to interviews. I told him that he did them because he loved me, and that my shouldering the bulk of family expenditures since I began working is my way of repaying him for all he did for me back then. He stated he understands what I'm saying but that he didn't expect me to start earning more than him right away. I asked if he'd consider going to couples counseling, as several of you had advised, and he rejected since he didn't believe he was being unreasonable. He said that he desired to be the provider in a relationship and that he didn't feel that way in hours, so there's no turning back until I resign my job and got another that paid significantly less which isn't going to happen. To cut a long tail short, we split up. His family is in shock. They were hoping that he would propose soon. For the time being, I've taken up residence at an Airden. To round up this report, here's more excellent news. My firm offered me a comparable position in a different department. However, this is situated in France. Thus, there is a tiny salary cut. I've always wanted to live in Europe, so I accepted this opportunity. I've signed the relocation contract, and I'll be moving there in the next 8-12 weeks. Story 2. Girlfriend cheated on me and is pregnant. In order for this narrative to make sense, I'll need to provide some context. My girlfriend and I have been dating for many years. We're both 30 years old. She works in public relations, but her previous career, although paying well, had no opportunities for advancement. She was probably there for four one slash two to five years and left a little over a year ago since our kid was due in mid-December and she believed it would give her the ideal amount of time to connect with him and find the perfect job. After around three months, I observed she's not content living at home and the interviews she's had for higher level positions haven't gone well. So I advise her to look for a job near our home that pays a lot less but has a lot of room for advancement. She hesitantly accepts and is immediately given the job. She comes home and tells me she is still unsure whether this is the appropriate place for her and that she believes it is a step back. I continue to encourage her until she accepts the job. She eventually falls in love with her profession. She made new work acquaintances straight quickly and they became into actual friends over time. Steve, a 24-year-old man, is one of them, not his real name. They'd phone and email each other often, as would many of her other work buddies. They'd have a work group chat, and they together on weekends for dinner and drinks, all of her co-workers who were friends. She started acting strange and distant around four months ago. I attempted to speak to her about it, but she said it was just work and that she had a lot on her plate. In the previous five months, we had intercourse with each other once. I attempt to be supportive of her but it always backfires and leads to disputes about trivial matters. Our kid celebrated his first birthday just before Christmas. We celebrated it the next Sunday. She's strange, sullen, and distant once again. She completely destroyed his birthday. Everyone from our circle of friends and relatives was there. She eventually leaves, saying me I'm bothering her and that she wants to get some fresh air. I'm at a loss on what to do at this point. I let go of her. For hours, I tried phoning and messaging her. Nothing. Her siblings and parents. The same thing. No one can get in touch with her. Finally, about 11 p.m. This all occurred around 3-4 p.m. She comes home and informs me it's simply not functioning anymore. I'm perplexed and begin to ask inquiries. She tells me it's all my fault, that I'm driving her insane, that this isn't working, and that she'll be staying with her parents for a bit. As a result, she departs. I let her leave, believing she needed some time to calm down. I can tell by chatting to her mother that she isn't truly present. The following day, I call and text her many times throughout the day and get no response. At this point, 
I believe something is going on, but I do not believe it is cheating. I believe she is in danger or is experiencing a nervous breakdown. Every small contact from her lasts about a week, only to drop the kid off with her mom so she can see him since she doesn't want to see me. I tell their parents that I'm concerned about her and believe something is wrong, and they agree. I'm guessing she informed them before informing me, but long story short, she agrees to meet me at a coffee shop after about two weeks of this insane things. I ask her if she's okay and if she needs anything. She goes on to say that she's been sleeping with Steve for months and that she's pregnant. I was really taken aback, went out, and sobbed in my vehicle. It's been many weeks and I'm still upset by this and I believe she's living with him. I'm attempting to cooperate with her, but I despise her. I do not want our kid to live in his apartment. I'm going to call a few attorneys tomorrow to see where we proceed from here. Anyone have any suggestions? I'm at a loss on how to go from here. I was certain she was the one.